Welcome, come on in to Sunday School Teachings. My name is Imelda Trevino England, and today we journey to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is the first of the writings of the prophets in the Bible. And Isaiah, the author, is generally considered to be the greatest prophet. And as usual, in the beginning of his ministry, or of any prophet, he is like well liked, but like most prophets, he soon became unpopular because his message messages were so difficult to hear. The book his he reigns for sixty years. Tradition says he was executed during Manasseh's reign. Let's journey and learn more together. The book of Isaiah is the twentieth is the twenty third book of the Bible and has sixty six chapters. The purpose of Isaiah is to call the nation of Judah back to God and to tell of God's salvation through the Messiah. Now, the book of Isaiah historically is broken up into three sections. The first half of the book of Isaiah are the first thirty five chapters. And it is known as the words of judgment. These first 35 chapters in Isaiah generally carry the message of judgment of for sin. Isaiah brings a message of judgment to Judah, Israel, and the surrounding pagan nations. The people of Judah had a form of godliness, but in their hearts they were corrupt. And Isaiah warns them. And um, and are intended to be to purify warnings were intended to purify the people by helping them understand God's true nature and message. However, they ignored the repeated warnings that Isaiah brought. We need to heed this prophetic voice and not repeat their error. The next section is considered the historical interlude. It's four chapters. And that is placed right between the first and what they call the second main part of Isaiah. And there we find a description of the Assyrians' attack against Judah and their defeat, as well as Hezekiah's healing of a sickness. Although historical, these chapters in their context stress the um, prophecies about Israel's enemies and the salvation of the remnant. The second major section deals with God versus idolatry, belief in truth, suffering in bringing salvation, and the end of the days of God's chosen people, known as words of comfort. These final 27 chapters in Isaiah generally bring a message of forgiveness, comfort, and hope. This message of hope looks forward to the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah speaks more about the Messiah than any other Old Testament prophet. He describes the Messiah as both the suffering servant and the sovereign Lord. The fact that the Messiah was to be both a suffering servant and a servant Lord could not be understood clearly until the New Testament times, based on what Jesus Christ has done. God freely offers forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith. This is God's message of comfort to us because those who heed it find eternal peace and fellowship with him. Let's find out, let's take a look at what are some of the main themes found in the book of Isaiah. Well, holiness is one of those. God is highly exalted above all his creatures. His moral perfection stands in contrast to evil people and nations. God is perfect and sinless in all his motives and actions. So he is in perfect control of his power, judgment, love, and mercy. Because God is without sin, he alone can help us with our sin. His holy nature in our standard for mortality is only right that we regard him as supreme in power and moral perfection. We must never treat God as common and ordinary. He alone deserves our devotion and praise. He is always truthful, fair, and just. Punishment. Because God is holy, 
He requires his people to treat others justly. He promises to punish Israel, Judah, and other nations for faithful, faith, faithless and more immortality and idolatry. True faith had degenerated into national pride and empty religious rituals. We also must trust in God alone and, fu and fulfill his commands. We should not forsake justice nor give in to selflessness. If we harden our heart against God's message, punishment will surely come. Salvation. Because God's judgment is coming, we need a savior. No person nor nation can be saved without God's help. Christ's perfect sacrifice for our sins is foretold, portrayed in Isaiah. All who trust God can be freed from their sin and, re and restored. We cannot save ourselves. However, God is willing to save all who turn from their sins and come to him. Salvation is from God alone. No amount of good works can earn it. The Messiah. Isaiah prophesied that God would send the Messiah to save his people. He would set up his own kingdom as the faithful prince of peace who rules with righteousness. He would come as sovereign, as a sovereign Lord, but first he would come as a servant who would die to take sin away. Because of this, our trust must be in the Messiah, not in ourselves or in any nation or power. We have no hope unless we believe in him. Trust God fully and let him rule in your life as the sovereign Lord. Hope. God promises comfort, deliverance, and restoration in his future kingdom. The Messiah will rule over his faithful followers in the age to come. His hope is possible because Christ is coming. We can be refreshed because compassion is available to those who repent. No matter how bleak the situation or how evil the world, we must continue to be God's faithful people who hope for his return. Beloved brothers and sisters, as you journey through the book of Isaiah, imagine this strong and courageous man of God fierce, fierce, fearlessly proclaiming God's word and listen to his message. Return, repent and renew in relationship in relation to your own life. Then trust in God's redemption through Christ and rejoice. Your savior has come again. Isaiah, one of my favorite verses is found in chapter 53, verse five, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Beloved brothers and sisters, I invite you to journey as a family through the book of Isaiah. Again, the first section, first thir 35, um, really describes the prophecies. When you look at the next four chapters, talks about the historical peace of the uh, King Hezekiah. And the final 37 chapters bring us words of comfort. Beloved brothers and sisters, until next time, be blessed. Gotta fix some words in here.